Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. Mid-January is here in force as the cold and ice have indeed come. We were expecting it, and it's here. Spring is on the way, <laughs> so we're told. But in the meantime... Like 60 days or something like that. Oh, you have a countdown going? I don't, but I've heard <laughs> other people making comments. About a week ago, I think they said 66 days. So that'd be around 60 we days. We were spoiled. Point. December was awesome. I believe it's like 35 days until the pitchers and catchers report. And that's the most important statistic. So we are getting very close. In the meantime, you can just <laughs> use your oatmeal and your mail order seeds from the catalogs <laughs> to warm your heart through the entire month. Because that wasn't just last week. The entire month was right. oatmeal and mail order mail seed order, gale <laughs> month. Mail order gardening month, yes. I think that's a good, we should, maybe we'll do some so hydroponic stuff gardening. coming up later on this month. We'll see. Well, I don't know if it'll be quite warm enough to do anything with dirt later this month. In, indoor dirt. Is that really dirt at that point? Indoor or is that just dirt. soil? <laughs> we'll go oh, out in the greenhouse out back. And there we go. Do some work. Well, we don't have that today, but we do have a few other things today, including a special story with the Parkway Girls basketball team who are doing something very special to help one of their own. The Red Cross is making an urgent request for blood donations. And how biblically rooted are your creation beliefs? We're going to tell you about an upcoming event designed to biblically proof your belief on creation. Our scripture verse is a repeat from last week. It's that important. This is on purpose. We really want you take some time to ponder what God is saying to us and to you through these verses. They're the theme of our 2016 Faith Challenge, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-9. through 9. And you can expect to hear these verses a lot this year. And you want to make every effort, as we take a look at the Scripture, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and Godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. A lot of really important information in those verses, but today we're focusing on one key word, virtue. Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. And I love how that passage ends about the forgiveness of our sins, remembering that we've been washed clean. And so it's because of that that we then take on these characteristics that the Holy Spirit empowers us to do. It mentions in there the word blind, that if we don't follow through and focus on those things, we are blind to the things that God has done for us. And I know personally, I don't want to be in that position. I want to be able to see the goodness that God is doing in every one of our lives, you know, even in the most difficult times. Everybody can take, uh, can praise God for something. I left them speechless. They have nothing more to say. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to start today's show with a look back at 2015. Even though we're halfway through the month of January, the year is just flying by. There's still some great things to remember from last year's Faith and Friends. Stories of inf inspiration, funny food segments, health wisdom from Dr. Trudy Pieper. As we've told you many times, you can rewatch the segments from our show online, and it turns out that one of our show segments has been viewed 6,070 times on the internet. I think it's 6,071 now. What segment was the most popular? We'll tell you in a moment. Here's a look at our top 10. We love lists. The tie for number 10, Jennifer's interview with the Newsboys from their concert at Nice Swanger, and Jennifer's story on Shine FM's third anniversary. Number nine, producer John Ondo completing his documentary on the Botkin School Project. At number eight, the Lipsick Ministerial Association hosting its first ever daddy-daughter date night, which featured Annie Lynch as the MC. Number seven, an interview about Light Winds documentary, a documentary that talks about the biblical definition of marriage, included quotes and notable nationwide individuals on the possible future of our nation. Matt Finkel's story on the West Side Wave, checked out at number six. The West Side Wave is one of the teams in the W-O-A-L Summer Swim League. Number five, Deb Williams Nevergall talks about her new book, A Heart Never Forgets, inspired by the unfortunate death of her 19-year-old daughter. Number four, it's Christian singer Hannah Beck, winning the Creation Sunshine Music Tournament and releasing her new album. Number three, Jackie Stewart, adopted out of an orphanage in Guatemala, talks about how an Operation Christmas Child shoebox impacted her life. And number two, local pastor Claytonia Manley Logan is honored with an award during the 2015 Martin Luther King Jr. Banquet. 
and announces the release of her new album. And finally, in the number one spot, this video has been viewed nearly 6,000 72 times on Facebook, Nearly. maybe maybe in nice, this moment. Nice, nice to see that you had the specific number <laughs> with the estimated nearly. Okay. Well, because it's so popular, <laughs> we thought we would share it with you again. And here it is, the number one most viewed 2015 Faith and Friends video, the first heavy metal Church of Christ. It sits on a street corner in Greenville, Ohio. It's not flashy, but certainly it's not hidden. It's the first heavy metal church of Christ. Yes, you will find bikes here. You'll find chains, tattoos, and some leather, but that's not the focus. You'll find hearts, hearts that are mending, people finding freedom. What you'll find at the first heavy metal church of Christ in Greenville is the presence of God. Even though you don't know what's behind the door, you gotta open that door by faith, don't you? And what happens when you do? He's right there to meet you every time. He's always there to meet you. Even when you can't see him, you can't smell him, you can't taste him, you can't touch him. But he's always there as soon as you crack that door open, isn't he? Don't let the title heavy metal fool you. Because according to pastors Mark Bird and Michael Fisher, the meaning of this heavy metal is needed by everyone. The, the heavy metal comes from putting on the full armor of God. And because we started out as a biker church, it kind of had the stigma of the metal, the bikes, the, the, the chrome, um, that kind of an image behind it when it first started out. But we've really developed into a come as you are um, church where anyone is welcome. You can have my dreams, take my will, give me yours. The gospel is preached and lives are challenged. Bird and fish aren't afraid to step out of the ordinary. This particular Sunday featured worship with Hannah Beck and testimonies from a St. Mary's police officer and a former Ku Klux Klan leader. Who comes here? We have um, anybody, people off the streets to um, judges and politicians will come through these doors. I, I see God working in the lives of people here because where they didn't have hope before, now they have hope because our hope really truly is founded in Christ. And that's the message. It's heard every Sunday at noon at a church that one by one is showing what Jesus meant when he said to love others. Really an incredible church. You know, I've been there several times. I've been to the Dayton campus several times as well. And it's just phenomenal to me, the hearts of the people who truly want to change their lives for Christ. Well, you know, I mean, you can go back to the Old Testament where, you know, Saul was judged on his outward appearance, but God was looking at David's heart. And that's what he is looking for, the heart, what we can find inside it. The outside appearance doesn't necessarily matter. It's what the message is and what the heart is, and certainly a great heart for the, the heavy metal church. It's real life. You know, they live their lives. It's very uh, apparent that they are doing life together. That's what the church is all about. Absolutely. Well, the church that got the number one spot on our top 10 list loves to help others in need. In fact, so does the Parkway girls basketball team. They care so much that they're planning a special fundraising dinner to support a player's father in a major time of need. Andy has more in today's OIO Faith on the Field segment. The day I came up with the idea was the day I found out Grace had to get her gallbladder taken out and I just thought like everything that they've gone through with her dad and then having to go through that with her as like a family we should try and help. Grace has been a really good friend to me so like it's just nice that we can do something to like give back to her. It meant that a lot of people support us and that people have our back through the hard times and it just means a lot that they would think so much of us to do this for us. I was really proud of them. I, I mean, they uh, they love each other. We, we try and uh, promote family, and that's what we really are. It's not something that we just talk about. And um, the love that the girls have for Grace and their family, it just was, uh, it made me really want to see uh, this benefit succeed. And uh, we're really hoping that we can do something to help them out. I think it's good knowing that we, like, all of us have the support of each other, so if something bad would happen, we have each other's back. Brad hopes to be on the transplant list in Indianapolis this spring. 
And those spaghetti dinners on January 29th from 4.30 to 7 p.m. are $8 each. Tickets can be purchased at the Parkway High School, Rockford's Village Office, Photo Star in Wilshire, or from any of the Parkway girls basketball players. In Rockford, Andy Lynch for the Sports Report. Great, uh, great to see that happening. Yeah, happy three freshman that. girls coming together and saying we want to do this for our, for our teammate. You're never too young to make a difference. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Speaking of never too young, last week Faith and Friends introduced you to Lauren Cunningham, the 11 year old Bath student who was fighting leukemia. She's a strong supporter of blood donation as she knows that blood donors were part of the cure that saved her life. Now the Red Cross is issuing an urgent request for blood and platelet donations to prevent a winter shortage. In November and December, the holidays reduced the number of scheduled blood drives by 1,700 nationwide, of course, not just here in Lima. However, that did result in 50,000 fewer donations than normal. Today's Lost Creek Care Center Health segment puts the spotlight on the month of January, which is National Blood Donor Month, and you have several upcoming opportunities to help make up for that shortfall. Go to our website, WTLW.com, to see a complete list of area donation dates, which does include the January 22nd date at Calvary Evangelical Church in Van Wert, January 23rd at Shawnee Community United Methodist Church here in Lima, January 26th at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Convoy, as well as some February dates at churches in Bluffton, also back in Van Wert. Again, you can see that complete listing at our website, WTLW.com, schedule your blood donation appointment by using the Red Cross Blood Donor app. You can do that by visiting redcrossblood.org or by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. Well, who created that blood? God did. Who created the earth? Again, God did. Well, are you completely sure? Have you had any doubts? Scott and Gillis of the Creation Ministries International realizes there are many people who still question if God truly created the earth. Most people believe the Bible is true. Uh, Has science proven the Bible wrong? Right? Is creation and evolution a side issue? Just, just, uh, Our ancestors understood origins by extrapolating from their own experience. How else could they have done it? Then science came along and taught us that we are not the measure of all the simplest things. simplest explanation is, there is no God. No one created the universe, and no one directs our fate. So you and I are the product of billions, billions of years. We share a common years, ancestor with chimpanzees. This animal eventually became human. I'm sorry, but if you don't understand that humans and monkeys came from a is common you ancestor... single out evolution and act as if there's some kind of major scientific dispute, and in fact... Evolution is a fact, not a theory. E evolution is a fact. I mean, that, that, that's right. There's no question Evolution about that. isn't an opinion, it's fact. Evolution is scientific fact. I'm sorry, I believe in evolution. We lived in the ocean 200 million that's years ago. Years. Eight million years ago, we emerged from microbes and muck. Hello, my name is Scott Gillis with Creation Ministries International. And as you just saw, the Bible is under attack. Our families are bombarded with the idea that evolution in millions of years are fact. And it's not a side issue. Doubting the Bible's history leads to questions like, what about dinosaurs? Who was Cain's wife? How did all the animals fit on the ark? And why does a loving God allow death and suffering? This will be a great outreach opportunity to invite your family and friends and get answers to these and many other questions. So please be in prayer for this event, and I look forward to seeing you soon. And now it's your turn to hear Scott Gillis in person. He's coming to Pandora Missionary Church Sunday, January 24th. 
His 9.30 session is entitled, Six Days? Really? At 10.45, he presents Creation, Why It Matters. And then his evening presentation at 7 o'clock will be Dinosaurs and Fossils, Amazing Evidence for Creation. The public is invited and there is no cost to attend. Certainly look forward to that. St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Lima has a new outreach center designed to give more than a handout, but rather a hand up. Dancy's with the director of the center who shares the heart behind the program and how it may help someone you know. Well, Jesse Hiddle joins me now, and Jesse is a member of St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Lima. And you have had um, quite a project uh, laid on your heart. And um, I am so excited for you to share your story with us because I think this has happened to several people and um, Maybe they've been afraid to actually admit to how their projects and how their missions have developed. So I'm so glad you could join us. I'm glad to be here. Uh, it started about back in April. I had a hysterectomy, went wrong. I was put on my back for, and matter of fact, I'm still going through it at this present time. It's been seven months, but in that meantime, I couldn't sleep. It was a week. God would not let me sleep, and I'm on pain medication, and you should be sleeping. Yeah. And I can't sleep, and every time I tried to sleep, he would say another idea in my head of how to help people. And after a week, I had enough, and I went into my pastor, and I said, you gotta help me, I need some sleep. And he said, we need to help, and the whole congregation took a leap of faith, and it has just grown. It's doubled its numbers. We opened up the SMC Resource Center. And SMC stands for? St. Mark's Community okay. Resource Center. It is for the whole community, all ages, races, genders. We don't care, just come in. We um, offer a hand up, not a handout. Um, we came to the realization after meetings of discussing how we wanted to help, was anybody can hand out that can of food. Mm -hmm. Once that can of food is gone, the problem still exists. That's true. We got to get to the root of the problem and we have to change situations so that we can change lives. Mm -hmm. um, Maslow had a theory that, you know, if you don't meet somebody's basic needs, you can't meet any of their other needs, whether it's love, spiritual, any of it. Mm -hmm. So we try to meet the basic needs and above and beyond. So how do you, um, how do you let people know? Obviously you're here talking yes. about it. Um, is it a word of mouth kind of thing that you were hoping to reach those who are in greatest need? Um, yes, word of mouth. We do social media. We have been, been on the radio. We're out there constantly, flyers, sending things to other churches. I want to connect with other churches, other resources. I think in today's society, churches have gotten so small and they can't do all the big things that they used to do all the years, but together we can. Mm -hmm. um, my organization wants to know what your organization is offering for help, so I know where to send these people. Half the battle is they don't even know where to go for help. I know, and many of these places don't even know others exist. So, yes. you know, um, the networking is really key, I think, it's as well. It's very important to network. So you're on Metcalf. Do you see, um, in Lima, do you see a lot of um, individuals just as you walk through the doors, as you're, you know, going back and forth to the church, people that are right there that can be helped? Oh, yes. We have noticed um, some people have said, well, I didn't even know you as a church. Well, yeah, we're right really? across the street from an elementary school and you didn't know we were as a church, parents park in our parking lot to pick up their children from school. Yes. And we've reached them even there. Oh, will you have some place I can go for help? They didn't even know. And kind of where we're located on the north end of Lima, there's not a whole lot within walking distance to get help. Mm -hmm. And uh, even internet. People take the internet service for granted today. Not everybody has an internet not service. At all. Yeah. So when we talk about, well, why haven't you found a job? Well, I don't have internet access, and it's 10 blocks to the library with my two kids. So that's kind of what we do. It, whatever is standing in the way from helping you make a better life for yourself yes. and your family, we want to eliminate it, and yeah. we'll find a way. You know, you were talking about the, the can of food. You know, you give the can of food, and I have talked to others who have soup kitchens that said, you give people the food, they don't even know how to cook it. Yes, and that's uh, another thing we're dealing with. We had Cooking for Change at our church um, just a few weeks ago, and they came in and taught ways how to cook cheap and nutritionally. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and our goal is every month to have something at our church that is beneficial to the community. Yeah. In January, we are going to have a health and wellness fair. Mm -hmm. February, a job and education fair. Just keep looking, it's out there every month is something new. Yes, and I also noticed finance classes. You know, um, so many of us have never been told how to make a budget, what a budget actually means. You know, so um, all of the basics, you are right, we need to learn. Yes, we're getting back to the basics, financing, budgeting, home ownership. Yes. We are working with, maybe it's education. Maybe you don't have an education. Yes. Years ago, it was on the job training. Now they want you to have that training before you get there. Yeah. So GED classes, and we'll connect you to some mark management classes, whatever it is we need to do to get you where you need to be. All right. Well, Jesse, I hope that you're sleeping much better now. Oh, like and a I baby. hope you feel a lot better, too. I do. Thank you very much. Yes, and thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right, back to you, Jen. Thank you, Dancy. January is Sanctity for Human Life Month. Heartbeat of Lima's annual March for Life took place Sunday afternoon. Petersburg Respect Life Committee is welcoming internationally known speaker Jana Jessen to a special one night event coming up later this month. While still in the womb, Jana was bathed in a burning saline, sol saline solution, which was intended to be an abortion, but she did not die. She's alive and well today and is sharing her story. January 29th, 6.30 p.m. at St. Joseph Church in Wapakoneta. Donations will be accepted to defray travel costs, Gianna's travel costs. For more information, call Joyce Plotfoot at 937-693-6251. 2016 Faith Challenge continues with the topic of virtue, goodness, moral excellence. All week long on TV44, we're sharing scripture verses that focus on goodness and virtue. For example, Philippians 4.8, Brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And it can be difficult that uh, sometimes we're bombarded with things that aren't worthy to be meditated upon, things that aren't worthy of our time and effort. That's why in 2016 we ask that you really take time to, to focus on those things that are worthy of meditation. And certainly here at TV44, our programming is full of programming that is focused on keeping you moral and keeping you on good and, and virtuous programming. Thanks to viewers who support TV44. Maybe you're like me some of those nights you can't fall asleep and you're thinking about what's coming up next. I think I'm going to try and do just that. I'm going to focus on the things that uh, that verse uh, really points out and might, maybe it'll help me. I bet it will. Well, this year's faith challenge is derived from 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7, which includes a long list of character qualities. And as Mark said, we're focusing on the first one, virtue. Some translations call it goodness or moral excellence. In the weeks to come, we'll study each trait. We'll share a verse with you again at the close of the show at 1 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7. that reminds you that uh, God wants to walk with you through this transformation in your life. But you know what? We're here to walk with you as well. Are you taking the 2016 Faith Challenge? Let us know. Send us an email, give us a call, or write to us and simply tell us, I'm taking the faith challenge. We can stand with you in prayer and we can be together throughout this, throughout the year. TV44 is thanking God for the many of you who took the challenge and partnered with us in the Continuing Christ Mission campaign. Folks like Harold in Bluffton, Matthew in Fostoria, also Mr. and Mrs. Jack Wurst in Wapakoneta. Thank you so much for being a part. Mr. and Mrs. James Johnson in Uniopolis, thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Cooper in Oakwood, they say we are giving $20 a month plus extra. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for your faithfulness. Corrine Van Atta, thank you as well. Larry Bailey in Waynesfield and Mr. David Stiles in Cartersville. And there's still time to be part of this year's funding campaign, which will continue to the end of January. You can donate by mail or in person at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio. 45807. You can also donate over the phone with your credit card at 419-339-4444. Donate online at WTLW.com or you can sign up for a monthly automatic withdrawal by emailing contact at WTLW.com or simply calling us to find out more information about that option. And on that note, we're going to take a, we're going to close now with one final look at our theme verse of the 2016 Faith Challenge. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9. If you haven't done it yet, we encourage you to get your Bible, mark this, and take some time to read it regularly. 
today, tomorrow, in the weeks and months to come. It says, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness, steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Keep in mind that God is saying right there in that scripture verse that as you are focusing on uprightness, moral excellence, as you're focusing on godliness, as you're focusing on brotherly love, all of these things, you are working to be more in a position where God can use you and God can change you in amazing ways. Yeah, I love how that's, it's, it's, it's a laundry list. You start with one and it goes to the second and goes to the third and keeps on continuing on as it, it leads to ultimately where God wants you to be. You have a great week. Thanks for joining us on Faith and Friends.